Hello, it's Simone. I'm here and I hope you are too. I am so glad that we can spend some time together today. And for the first time in a long time, I definitely made an outline on what I want to talk about. The first thing is news. It was my birthday this week. And besides the birthday pens, where there is a video on uh, my channel, there's actually two videos that you can find there, the Scribo Feel and the Opus 88 Pink Demonstrator 2024. I don't know in which way these words go, but that's part of the name of this pen. I also received some awesome, awesome things from my family. Um, the birthday pens I purchased myself, but the other things that I got, which were on my wish list, and this was one of the first times that my husband actually stuck to it, which I really appreciate very much. Makes me very happy. Don't, even though I would like to be a spontaneous person, um, makes me very happy to know that I got what I wanted. Um, this, what you can see right here is one of the things that I received. This is a pen tray. Um, I listened to the Tokyo Station Pens episode that came out in the beginning of January um, where they talked about the things that they loved in 2023 and um, my name is my name game is really weak this time around. Uh, Alicia, is that her name? It feels wrong. Um, she has a YouTube channel, which I also don't remember. Um, she talked about the fact that she really obsessed about pen trays. Um, she can just leave them on her desk. And that was when I heard that I was like, that is my solution. I don't need pen pouches because I don't really take my pens anywhere. And if, then I can still put them in a pen case. I need a pen tray on my desk and I'm just going to put my inked pens on there and then I can just grab them whenever I want. And wow, I'm so, I'm so happy my son made this for me. It looks perfect. It was supposed to be a little bigger but I'm actually really happy that it's that small. It broke in half right here. So now there is a live edge. It's a little wonky, but that's exactly how it's supposed to be. And I really love it. Uh, my pens fit all fit in here. And I just have it here sitting to my right. And I, I filmed a clip prior to starting the video. So you can see where it sits. I can just take whatever I want. And um, yeah, I'm so excited about this. And also it's, it's a really great thing to show on my videos too. But I got this more for having my pens open and reachable at all times, uh, rather than having this just for my videos. That's a good side bonus. Then I also put on my wish list, which my friend Casey uh, made me aware of these pens. You've been hearing about um, my uh, enamored love story with the Pilot Parallels. Um, uh, she made me aware of John Neal Bookbinders, book I think is their name, and they sell modified uh, Pilot Parallels. This one is their Radius. Um, it is made from a 4.5 millimeter uh, one, and someone does something to the nib. You can see it's rounded. This one is a 1.5, but I just want to show you how it usually looks. It's just a straight edge and this is rounded. And so you have line variation now. However, when I dipped it, it would not write. And then I just put in the cartridge it comes with. 
to see how it works and it did not write well earlier it was so disappointing so i decided because they're still affordable even when they are um modified i could just put my micro mesh to this and see how it works this was i also have a clip of this i'm gonna add it here so you can see it but now it seems well it's still well maybe i'm holding it too far down but if i hold it higher up i can get now a line from most angles and so you can see it's wider here if i hold it like this it's wider here and i also can makes it, it it just makes it more usable uh with the pilot parallel that is a straight edge you really have to make sure that you just write like this but with this you can also um, write cursive but cursive and i think if i practice with this more uh, this way doesn't doesn't flow well but yeah it's so much better um and i'm really happy about this now um so yeah i also maybe i'm talk going to talk about that in my ink journal update but that's the first thing and then um i got a lot of happy mail but i also that's why i'm talking about this right now uh, I got a really lovely happy mail from my friend Amy and she sent this to me and this is in my ink swatch pouch that I started making. I think I talked about this in my last uh, video where I said that I'm or the, the video prior where I said that I'm revamping my desk. Still very cluttered but I was able to get some things off. This is the Caveco, Caveco Sketch Up 5.6 in brass. And she uses this. This is a really thick pencil. She uses this for her Kakimori dip nib. And this fits right in here. And so now I can use this, which I think is really fun. Um, it's probably going to be an adjustment period for me because this is so long. This is quite short, but I don't use this very much. So I think it will be okay. But I love this. Even if I didn't want to use this with the, it, this awesome pencil lid is cool too. Let me, where's, where did I put here? Isn't this cool? So, so grateful to have friends like this, uh, to have friends who give me, make me aware of nibs that I have never heard of um, and who exactly know that this is definitely something that I would love to play with and who send me awesome gifts for my ink swatching. So really excited. Uh, to be using that next time I'm filming a swatches with friends video which I hope to get to next weekend we'll see we'll see I'm gonna throw this out now or maybe I'm going to keep this I don't know yet what else did i want to talk about yes i pentre kaweko sketchup radius i was finally able to act to reach someone with um my ink uh spot sample giveaways i don't know why that was so hard for people to see my emails so before i used to um comment under the comment that the person left on my video 
and something must have changed in the beginning of this year, January, when maybe people don't get notifications automatically on comments, uh, but no one ever replied to my comments anymore. Um, so if you have seen it maybe or heard on another video, I have now a Google Forms um, where you can enter. It's basically a rolling giveaway. Yeah, so this is how my life is right now. Um, so we have to live with that, um, with screeching dogs in the background. And I'm not that knowledgeable about the sounds he makes. My husband is much more familiar. So now I'm like, does he need to go pee? But he just went, so he doesn't need to, right? What else is wrong? Ah, stress. Um, and so now I've been doing this basically rolling giveaway. There's nothing to see here. That's weird. Um, where I just going to bring out my my awesome reading journal so i am doing this rolling giveaway where basically you fill out the form and then you're entered for all of 2024 you check the mark if you're it want if you want to participate in ephemera and ink or either one of those i am really not uh, able to send ink samples outside the United States. So if you're international, please check off ephemera instead of both because I'm not sending ink samples all the way to somewhere else where the cost of shipping is so much higher than the value that is inside the envelope. Um, so yeah, and then I sent out emails to the people asking if they are still interested and I'm not hearing back. So I got really frustrated because this is just something that I want to do occasionally. I don't want my life revolving about notifying people that they won. Um, so in the future, moving forward, I will just, if the person doesn't reply, uh, I'm just going to roll over as, as with the year, I'm just going to roll over the ink samples to the next person and whoever replies will just get a huge big batch of inks if the other people don't respond because I just there I have so many other things that I can do with my time than tracking down people that I want to give send ink to so but I heard back from all two both of the people that I uh gave my swatches with inks one and two of 2024 too. I also sent out all the ephemera. So yay, I have one ephemera envelope for February that I will be giving away at the end of February. So that's the ephemera and giveaway stuff. And then I've also been thinking about placing a small order with Paper Treats Shop. Uh, they have the four legs washi tape in their shop right now, which I'm I really love cats and I also don't have any dog ephemera, dog stickers, dog anything. So I might need to change that and I want to check if she, if May has something in her shop that I can use or I can order. If not, then that's okay too. So I will link all the things that I talked about in the description box down below. And now we are going to start with my reading journal. I talked about the book that I started reading uh, last week, which was Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone. Um, and I wasn't sure if I was going to finish or not. In my family has killed someone and it is by Benjamin Stevenson and I think if I'm not mistaken is also read by the author and he his 
he is an Australian author, um, which doesn't really matter. But uh, just interesting to know because, of course, you can hear that when he reads the book to you. Um, I decided to finish the book. And it was okay. But I'm hesitant to listen to the second one. I'm not sure that this kind of writing style is something that fascinates me. Um, it was interesting, but it also wasn't. I was just then, then I wanted to know, so how, what, what is this? What is the, I wanted to hear the rest of the story, but not, I, I wasn't in it for the enjoyment, just for curiosity's sake, because this is supposed to be a thriller, criminal thing, something um killed yeah crime procedural i don't even know what that's supposed to mean <laughs> i just hear it on podcasts listen to this on audio um and it was okay it was okay okay but i'm but i'm okay but i'm not convinced that's probably the best um, but if you like these kinds of stories and if you have it, if you can get it from the library, I would suggest listening to it because it's definitely different than many other, um, of these kinds of types of books, whatever these types of books are. <laughs> I'm such a good reading person. I can talk about books in such elaborate words. This is fantastic. Seven. Then... Um, I think I showed this in my last video. Um, I am trying with all the extravagant hope by Brandy Kincaid, um, um, envelopes, happy meals that she sends. I'm really trying to go through it all. Um, sometimes it's really hard for me to use these kinds of things in in put it in a journal but what i have decided to do uh is to take what what serves me and then just pass along all of the snippets that she sends with happy mail to my friends um which makes me happy in the end too so i don't really need to keep all of this it that just is a process that took quite a while. Um, but so I am going through the happy mail, trying to go through the happy mail in a very timely fashion right after it arrives. Um, because it, it really gives me something just maybe reading what she writes. Um, and so I saw this card and this she usually sends one or two of these uh, quotes with author, title, and then the quote of the book. And then on the back, she writes, it's, it's basically like a library card. And then here is the snippet that she writes why she put the quote and sent this card. And this says, seasonal shifts always leave me craving a quick feel, quick Feel good type of book. I remember reading this because I got stuck on the same thing. Uh, I want something imperfect and tender, a book with flawed characters who, who reflect my own flawed heart, but who somehow find their way to a bit of happiness and peace. Not the great novel, but a gentle reminder that some characters do find their way and we might too. Um, and I was actually, I went on Libby. I have, I'm on three libraries there and there is one. Broward County Library. If you go look for those, it's a library in Florida that does not uh, do a proof of residency. Uh, I, I signed up for them. I was honest in everything that I put as information there and I'm able to use their full library. And that's how I was able to borrow this book right away. And I listened to this uh, yesterday and Friday, and 
I just feel like I want to stay with these characters for longer. Such a good book. A definitely a 2024 best book contender already because it just felt so, yeah, so normal people, flawed characters and how they overcome their flawed life, how they find a bit of happiness. And in the end, it's not perfect, but it's better. And that felt so good. So can highly, highly recommend the Authenticity T Project by Claire Pooley. Oh, I usually, see, I forgot that I was going to write down audio again. I don't really read books, not audio. So this, probably I only need to write it down when it's not audio. This one was from the Currently Reading Podcast, but I have heard this book mentioned on other podcasts as well. And it was part of many of the people on the podcast's favorite book of 2024, uh, 2023 book list. So I thought, I was hesitant from the start, but I thought because it ended up on so many best books of 2023 lists, I decided maybe I should give it a try. Audio. Um, this was from Brandy. And definitely a best book of 2024 contender. I loved this. It somehow this book, it wasn't, it felt like these per people were actual real people and not just characters from books. That's what made, made this book so special. All right, so reading journal is done. I received so much happy mail this week. And I'm so excited and I really just want to say thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you, Kristen. I really appreciate you all so much. It's so fun to go to the post box and open it and there's a letter for me. Uh, well, actually, I see it in my informed delivery, but also it's still, it's like, I know that it's coming and that I, I can, I have a reason to go to the post box and that's so cool. So one thing I want to talk about my letters is that, I hope there is not an envelope inside, I have started to uh, write multiple letters at the same time. and. It's so much better. I was able, these ones I'm still working on, but I just, you know, I just, okay, I want to write letters to these four peoples. I'm starting them at the same time. I'm just writing hello, such and such, and then maybe the first few lines. And it's so much easier when I have five minutes of time to go back and continue writing. Um, so I did also send out quite a few letters this past week. Not as many as I had hoped, but you know, I still have a teeny tiny baby at home. Baby, I'm meaning the puppy. And so exhaustion is real and I just need to give myself grace. But this is definitely something that I need to keep in mind for the future. I have a hard time starting things, but if I start multiple things at the same time, it's so much easier to continue instead of starting all fresh. Another thing I want to talk about is my writing journal. I shared last week that I moved into the B-Sides and Rarities super lightweight paper and this paper is so bad for my pens. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. So this was the Gravitas pocket pen and it was kind of dried out, clogged. It writes better now here. 
Then I used the Twisby Eco 1.1 stub. It was, wasn't good either. Then I used the Bennu Ambrosia with brown, brown orchid with a medium nib. It was okay, but it always feels like the, the ink doesn't stick to the paper. That's how it feels like there's already some kind of coating on there that it just pearls off. This one was the best one that I was able to use, uh, the Sig Medium on the Estabrook SD. And it's also, it's, it's such a dark, vivid ink that it sticks to it. Even my Palette Custom 823, which always writes reliably, it, it looked weird. And then the uh, Scarlet, SD Scarlet in Fine Flex also. Yeah, I tried to flex, it worked, but yeah. Yeah, so I decided that I'm going to continue with this and just see how other pens write. Um, I will use one page every day. So I start fresh, well, every day, every time I journal, I will use a new page, start on the top, even like here, where I started here, I will not do that moving forward, just so that I can use up these pages really quickly. So if I have one and a half pages, then I will just, next time I will. Okay, the dog and all the rest of the family went on a winter hike hike in uh what is that <laughs> i don't even remember <laughs> names are not my thing today um or words in general hike because the puppy is still a puppy so they're not really hiking but they're outside we have a winter storm coming through and so that's exciting so this i think i showed i am done with all the pens that i have used this month to make one page for them there is i'm okay with not filling this up all the way some have lots of thoughts some don't and that is sometimes because i've used them more than once um sometimes there isn't much to say but i really like this i want to continue doing this what i have what i think what i'm going to do in February is um, the way that I'm like choosing my pens and inks is that I am going to film my ink down video before I'm actually going to do my review. And the reason for that is that um, if I pick the inks, I'm just telling you, um, this is how I'm thinking it about it right now and when i'm done with my february videos then i will see if that is actually a good thing for me to do it that way but the thought is that if i'm picking the inks and i'm going down to eight pens yep um in february i'm p picking them randomly blind then I have a random assortment of four inks, and then I'm going to check which pens I want to move forward. Because I do want a variety of colors mostly. Um, and yes, there are some that I'm definitely going to unink, but there are some that are more, like I, I could move this forward. I could also say I'm uninking this, and inking it with a different ink right away. Um, like, I'm not sure if I want to keep on these two, maybe this one. I'm not sure about this one, maybe this one. So there is more than four pens that I could move forward. And so by choosing the inks first, then I can think about which pens I want to move forward I know some that I definitely want to unink, like this one and this one. And in my uh, review video, I'm give, giving away the, the whole bottle of this um, that's in here. Um, but yeah, so these two I'm definitely going to unink. This one I'm going to unink. Not so sure about this one. So there is more than four left, but I want to... I want to know what colors are coming before I make the decision. So that's what I'm going to do, what I think what I'm going to do. And then, because then I have the four 
pens or even less pens pick to move forward, I will then be able to know which of those here I can do a review. And I'm not going to review any of the pens that I'm moving forward. I'm going to review them when I decide that I'm going to ink them up, uh, to unink them, not ink them up. So if I'm moving this one forward to February, then I will make my review of this pen at the end of that inking period. I think this will suit me better, but we will see how that works. This is the trial for February. And I'm also, you already see the line here, I'm not going to, originally I thought that this is what I want to do with my pen, with my currently inked pens. This is the last page basically of my ink uh, rotation. And it's nice, it looks good, but it's just a nice, I can see this all the way. So. The only thing that is good for this is that it's good for show, um, but you know how I am. <laughs> that I don't really care about show most of the time. Um, so what I've decided to do is there is a lot of space on these pages left. And finally, the, uh, what is this called? Snowplow is coming through. It took a long time. It started snowing last night. Um, yeah, so I am going to just put this here and then when I do the review in the video, I will have to flip around and find the pages and that's okay. It's not going to be an, a nice look at this um, picture and so that's okay. I did do things. I think I've talked about this previous last week as well. I sold two pens. Um, but this last week that I, before I shared the video, I think I purchased the four Pilot Parallels from Katie. And then I also decided, so here I put Unink Early Dusk Moonbeam. So these two I'm definitely going to unink then I'm, I'm documenting every time I'm getting samples in and how many. I forgot Pamela though. Oh, that was February. <laughs> and then at the end of the month, I am going to do my status update. So I'm not going to wait until I film my review video for the inks and pens that I have inked right now. I am going to do that on the last day, first day of the month and have this here. Uh, sorry, we have two dogs in the neighborhood that always uh, escape and they're not friendly and that happened just earlier. So I had to help get the dog and the family inside, but it's all done. Um, so I'm going to do the status update at the end of the month this is the best how this is how it's going to be working for me best and i'm going to just start the next month uh, and not care whether i am filming a video right now whether i have filmed it or not i'm um, not going to film the video on the first of the month or anything it's just going to be for me and i'm sharing the journey along the way on youtube um so i I al already said that I watched Karina and I think her way of documenting these things is so much better. So <laughs> I probably am just going to rewatch her video and do it the exact same way because I don't really know how I'm like if this is really a good way of documenting it so that when I'm looking back at it in August, I still remember what all of those numbers mean. I know that I have now currently 37 pens. I have 56 bottles of inks and I have 217 um, samples in total. I 
am just going to, because I have samples that are swatched and samples that are unswatched, and then I also don't know how many are going out, um, I'm just going to keep track of these numbers and not worry about uh, any other things. I purchased the four pilot parallel pens from Katie that she loaned me sometime in November. Um, but I counted them as pens, but I think what I'm going to do is because I don't think that I will be using these pens as pens. I'm just going to remove the nibs and use them with my new Opus 88 demonstrator. Um, I'm going to count them as nibs instead of pens. So currently this says I own um, 37 pens, which does not include this one. This came in February and it will be 33 in February when I do my status update, because that's what I'm going to be doing with those nibs. Um, yeah, so I started February and this is what this looked like when I, I need to figure out how to use this, how the new pen worked. And yeah, so I'm just documenting and I'm not using a fountain pen to document so that I'm able to write it really quickly and not have another barrier of entry. I am putting down what comes in, what goes out, and I'm also going to put down any thoughts I have about pens and inks, and I really like that. I will, when I do my review, do it in this way. So I'm going to write the uh, um, these sentences down here. There's enough space for that, which I think works really well. Um, I was kind of afraid um, because as you can clearly see my numbers for ink samples have risen which is not something that I'm, I'm really not concerned about this number even though it's a high number but I know that I'm going to give away all of the inks that I fused in January and because I haven't done the review yet um, I'm not giving them away yet so the number will go down but if friends keep sending happy mail and samples that's just not going to go down really fast and especially when I'm deciding that I'm only inking up eight instead of ten pens so I'm also you know using less than I originally intended. But as I have said multiple times before, um, it's, not, it's not really about getting rid of inks because then I would have to use so many more inks given that big number. Oh, I have an announcement. So in March, the eight pen questions tag is going to be a year old and Leanne and I have talked and we are inviting you all to participate. I am going to post probably during the upcoming week, I'm going to post a, a sign up sheet for everyone who wants to participate via YouTube video uh, and share their take on the original eight pen questions. It doesn't matter if you have participated and answered them before or not. It matters if you want to participate. So there is first timers and second timers. It's both very, very interesting. Um, so we would love to hear your take on those again, because we have found that over the past year, our thoughts and our ideas have changed so much from that first original video that we can do this every year uh, and have 
other thoughts, other ideas, other grail pens, other numbers or no numbers. And yeah, so we would love to, to do a revisit on the eight pen questions in March. And it would be ideal and awesome if we would get 31 people to participate. So um, I'm going to put a sign up sheet and because in my opinion, I think there's a lot of time that you can film that video in February. Uh, and then I'm just going to slot you in to a day and then that's your assigned day when you post the video. We think it would be awesome if we had one eight pen questions video every day. During the month of, month of March, Leanne and I will be doing a, a Zoom video and then we also will be doing our individual videos because sometimes, or maybe after watching uh, 20 other people talk about their eight pen questions, maybe we already have thoughts on the eight pen questions that differ from when we talked about it in the beginning. And we also are not 100% sure that the first video is going to answer those questions for both of us. So that's, what do you think? What do you all think? Are you going to participate? I think I'm going to make an announcement video about that in the upcoming week so that we reach enough people. But if you see this, and if there is, if you find on my com community tab, if you find a sign up sheet and you want to participate, please feel free to sign up. And I will email each one of you individually and give you a date when your video should go up. No other requirements, but to answer the eight questions. All right, so let's talk about the other journals that I haven't talked about just yet. And this video is going to be so long. So when I'm reading, the things that Brandy sends when I find quotes, I am going to put them in here. And this is maybe the most, the closest to what I could consider a commonplace journal. I started using this for something else. And then I decided that it's going to be my quotes journal. And when I'm done using this, I will be moving into my 2024 Hobonichi Hon, I believe. Maybe not, but that's the idea right now. But this is all the uh, quotes that I find, uh, sometimes randomly, sometimes not. And I sometimes add new things and randomly. But what I'm trying to do is when I read Brandy's letter, letter that she includes into her um, extravagant hope mail, I am highlighting what I take from it and then I'm writing it down and then I'm also passing along that letter. So I, and what I want to say is that I am adding more slowly. I got entangled in my, do I want to talk about this? No. I have some ephemera that I need to sort through. This one I got from Amy. It's a whole set of numbers. And this is what came with Kristen's Happy Mail. And I think I'm just going to use this for next week. But here is my weekly journal. I have caught up. I think last week I showed you that I was right here. So I, I actually did not film this until later this morning when I was done with all of this. And yeah, I can write small so I can fit much in here, but I can also write bigger so I don't have to write so many things. This was with the Pilot Parallel, um, which I really like. So. I already have some things. Here's another dog ephemera that I found. I'm going to put this here next week, this upcoming week. This was included. Maybe I can find a space for this. I have not journaled for the week that is going to be over today, but that is what is coming. And 
I did take my um, small things journal upstairs with me and put it next to my bed. The struggle that I have with this is that when I'm walking upstairs, I'm thinking of something and when I'm with my journal, I have forgotten. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my gosh, what the heck? So sometimes these are not very like high, these are very random at times, but I, I like that I'm keeping up with them. So I also decided that I'm just going to, instead of thinking about, oh, I want to add all of those stickers, if there is space and I find a sticker that I can add on Sundays, I will do that. And then I will take it upstairs with me for the next week, bring it down the next Sunday, add stickers if there are, and then I'm going to be good. Um, yeah, so that's what I have been working on recently. I just used, as I said, my very, I think this is my very last dog ephemera that I have. I need to go through all of my stuff again and see if I find more. But I have been doing these weekly updates on Max. And I kind of need at least one dog sticker for, for every week. So I don't know how long I will do this, but as long as there is so much, as he's growing so much, as long as he's learning so much, it's really interesting to have that in my weekly journal. I don't, I'm not planning on starting a journal just for him, even though that sounds very fascinating because I don't think I would be able to keep up with it. So when I'm done with this video, this, filling this in, stickering the weekly um, and just like, you know, cleaning my desk again and again and again is what I'm going to do, um, which is awesome because it's a, a winter storm day. I didn't have to go out to the gym today. I didn't have to go to puppy training classes. Nope. I can just stay at home all day long and do awesome things. I'm almost done, almost done. But I wanted to show you, I think I have one right here that these date stickers from Dodo Lulu, I purchased them through her, their Pinkoi store. Um, this is the upcoming week. I put this into my writing journal and every time that I don't journal, I'm just going to take them out. And sometimes I like, well, no, that's not true. I, if I decorate things, then I pull these out that I haven't used and see if I can use them for something. Um, but what I'm doing right here, maybe there's one that I can show you. Yeah, I think I did this last week on my, maybe I did this on my video, but this is what I've really been liking doing and uh, what the, the washi tapes that I've been coming to really enjoy and appreciate are these. So I, I think I purchased those in maybe 2020. I was still living two houses ago. <laughs> I purchased these two houses ago. So that's how long I've had them. Um, these two. I think all three of these are Pion, Pion tapes and I've just been taking the next one and cutting around these and adding them in and then sometimes I'm going in here and adding some from this one and it's so much fun. So maybe in 20 years when I'm done with these PET tapes I can add more to my stash. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I do love cats, but I wish there were as artistic dogs. I don't know. They're... The dogs that are on washi tapes are often these, the, the dog breeds that you can find more in Asia. And 
or these teeny tiny fluffy dogs these eh, those are not the ones as I like I like Labrador retrievers and so that would be cool if they were um, on ephemera so if you know of anything that I can use let me know and I'm going to add a photo of how big Max is I took a photo of him on I think my birthday uh, February 1st so I'm done I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me today I really appreciate you taking the time every week to hear all of my rambles it's so much fun to talk about all of those random things that don't matter one teeny tiny bit but only stationary lovers and fountain pen lovers would understand why we stress about those things all the time How, well I just said stress I really am at a good place with that stress level this is not really stressing me out so I am just enjoying every minute that I spent with my stationery at the moment so I hope you do too I hope you have a great fabulous second week of February and I will see you next Sunday bye